Hello and welcome to coverage of Pro Tour Magic 2015 from Portland, Oregon. Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with both Randy Bueller and Zach Hill. And we are down the stretch here. 15th round of action, gentlemen. And uh, top eights are going to start being decided here this round and oh, next yeah. round. And uh, right now, Pat Cox is on 12 and 2. He's playing down against John Finkel, who's yep. on 11 and 3. What does that mean for these players, Randy? Basically, it's a win and in for Finkel. And Pat Cox can lose and still make top eight if he gets to shake hands for an intentional draw next round. Okay. Pretty much a win and in for Finkel. That's the line here. So this is Pro Tour Magic 2015. Can he make it number 15? Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he has to. That's too he's perfect. Kind of, he's, kind yeah. of, he's just kind of has to, right? JM15. <laughs> I'm sure he agrees <laughs> with us as well. JM15. Too perfect. I'm just excited to see Pat Cox's deck here. I mean, it's different than what most of the field's playing. I mean, he's not really coming out too fast. Yeah, it's an awfully slow draw. Two two lands and nothing from Pat Cox. Now, this no is life the downside zombie. to Patrick Cox's deck, right? Facing people that play Light Fane Zombie in the main deck? It's not good. Well, I feel, I mean, like your only targets are Gore Clan Rampager and Boros Reckoner that don't cost less than the lifebane itself. That said, I mean, any time that you get hit, I mean, yeah, it's out of just your hand. massive. Yeah. Right. I mean, even if they just take, you know, a lion or some such, you're still really far behind on that sequence. And this, I mean, this is really awkward for Patrick, right? He's got two Brave the Elements, but he's got a 2 2 Vigilance, and that's it. I mean, that is what he has against John's entire deck. John's still a healthy 20 life. Yeah, there it is, the 2-2 Vigilance Knight token from the Celestia Charm. See, so in Brave the Elements, it's just a color of white creature control game, game, infection at Gorn during the turn. Yes, sir. Finkel just doing a quick double check with Brave the right, uh, Elements. Okay. It's kind of funny watching the Twitter banter with Pat Cox and his teammates. Good. You know, earlier they're saying, why didn't you tell us your deck was good? Pat <laughs> basically rolls his eyes in about 140 characters. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the, the latest one is him reminding LSV that Luis was on this deck until about 12 hours before the Pro Tour. <laughs> oh, no. And audibled off of it. And what were the rest of those guys playing, do you know? Oh, uh, they played the red deck. They played a red aggro deck, very burn heavy. We've seen Matt Sperling having the, was the one who's having the most success with it. Sort of young Pyromancer and 27 burn spells. So Finkel added a Desecration Demon to the board, putting up nine power on turn four here. What that seems pressure? Fair. Yeah, I mean, and, and this is exactly where Brave the Elements is absolutely at its worst. You really Jeez. need a ton of guys. Wow. Another life bane zombie here. At least this one whips, <laughs> but that's because. Cox's hand it's, full it's, of Brave the Elements. It's not a complete whiff. He gets uh, information. True. Like, even when Lifebane Zombie misses, just being able to get that free peek yeah. effect, I mean, on a 3-1 Intimidator, it's pretty powerful. And in particular, I've never seen anybody who plays better when they have full knowledge of their opponent's hand than John Finkel. Mm. Yeah, I remember a, a card that it's been likened to in kind of a weird way is Vendillion Click. Mm. That oftentimes, even if you don't use the ability, like even if you're just down with what's in your opponent's yeah, hand. Yeah, you know what to play around, right? Exactly. Finkel takes a look at uh, yeah. Pat Cox <laughs> and uh, Pat admits to having the, nearly drawn a land <laughs> and scoops him up. You may scoop. So John Finkel takes a quick game one against Patrick Cox. We will be back after these messages. Outfit your Magic collection with the newest Magic 2015 core set accessories from Ultra Pro. You can see the full array of card sleeves, deck boxes, playmats, and portfolios of your favorite Magic artwork at ultrapro.com. You've watched the Pro Tour. How about playing on the Pro Tour? Qualifiers for Pro Tour Cons of Tarkir are going on now around the world, with winners earning an invitation and airfare to Honolulu, Hawaii in October. Visit wizards.com ptq for more information. All right, why don't we jump over to one of our side table matches where William Huey Jensen is playing against Yuki Ichikawa from Japan. Now, Huey, he's really been the story of this tournament thus far, right? I mean, Huey has dominated this tournament. Yeah, Huey's delivered a really, really commanding performance, but I am excited to see Ichikawa's deck. Uh, Tim Willoughby and I were covering it earlier. It's a Jun Planeswalker's build with four copies of Nissa coming out of Magic 2015, so a great deck to showcase the new set. Does some really powerful things. We saw the impact of Lifebane Zombie against Pat Cox. This deck dodges Lifebane almost entirely by just playing Planeswalker after Planeswalker, which Zombie doesn't hit. Yeah, you know, one thing I've noticed 
So he's clearly using Xenagos as an offensive threat here by making satyrs. Every time we had him in the feature match area earlier when I was down there, and when I was watching, every time I walked by, Ichikawa was just making a 4-4 four -four and attacking. It was just a, it was a beater. Like, that was the whole plan for, uh, for Nissa. They see, uh, Ooh, this can't be good for Ichikawa. I think he just sacked his, uh, nope. his courser just to keep the demon tap down there. Yeah, I mean, that, that is, in my opinion, isn't as bad as it could be because now you have a Xenagos that can make a token every turn, essentially hold off that demon forever. Now you're looking for an answer, of course, to pack, right? It'd be amazing if you could blow up Banishing Light somehow, but, I mean, you still see Nissa World Waker over there, so Ichikawa by no means out of gas. And Ichikawa's attacking with the Seder here. Oh, wow. And he's got another Chandra Pyromaster. You said it would be amazing. There it is. <laughs> Boom. Pack rat down. He's got a planeswalker. So is he going to be making a satyr attack with its sacket? Is that the sequence that he's going to be going with here most likely? We don't have life totals here, but... That would be my guess. I mean, and as long as he's able to do that, Ichikawa's in great shape. Now, if Huey draws a removal spell, that demon can kill a planeswalker whenever it attacks or probably kill him in two or three hits at this point. So, I mean, definitely Ichikawa relying upon those satyrs to survive. Right, Mutavault though, doing what Mutavault does best, attack Planeswalkers. <laughs> Mutavault has a lot of uh, Planeswalker kills to its name. Chandra doing a lot of work now, taking care of Pack Rat, about to finish off a Life Bane zombie. I wow. Mean. So Ichikawa's hand looked like two Nisses. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have the second Mizium green mortars, source. I think. Oh, he doesn't have the second green source, you're saying? I think yeah. he's got it, right? There's a. I can't quite tell. There's I mean, a it stomping looks to ground me like and a stomping ground. Yep. Yeah, and I only see the stomping ground. ground. That's not a gruel temple right there below it, the yep. Temple of Abandon? Yep. It looks like it is to me, right. but uh, I, <laughs> if he passes the turn without casting yeah. this, it looks like we red might white learn. to me. Ah, uh, okay. Well, uh, I, I don't no, okay. no, you're right. right. He's good. Great. <laughs> so, three planeswalkers on Ichikawa's side. That's kind crazy. Of crazy. Right, passes the turn back after making one of his lands into the 4-4 from Nissa. And like you said, we've got some uh, this deck's crazy. pretty insane Planeswalker action yes. for Ichikawa here. Awesome stuff. Now, this harkens me back to the good old days of Japanese deck building back <laughs> in the mid-2000s. What show was it like up. back then? They just, they'd show up with something you've like never imagined before in your entire right. life. It's totally off the wall. You know, you're playing four copies of Nissa in a deck with, I think, nine total forests. You know, but, I mean, it, it, it does attack the metagame very effectively. There just aren't that many good ways to deal with all these planeswalkers, and it's These, these are the effective. worst lifebane zombies I've ever seen against the green deck. Yeah, right. No, exactly. Lifebane zombies are like peak and Chandra food. <laughs> <laughs> really, you're paying three mana for just a peak effect. So Huey's going to use his Mutavault to take down Xenagos, the one that was really pumping out the most creatures there to keep that Desecration Demon at bay. And Ichikawa's going to have to find a way to... Uh, continue to do that. I mean, that said, Ichikawa can attack for eight points of damage next turn. Here's a hero's downfall oh, wow. on Nissa, though. I don't think Ichikawa's going to be too bummed about that, as he's got a backup Nissa in his hand, and he even drew a land here so that he can attack with his uh, existing transformed <laughs> land. So he, he can... He can use the zero ability on Chandra to look at an extra card. He can tick it up to continue to deal damage. He can, right, cast Nissa the World Waker. He can attack for four. I mean, a lot of options on Ichikawa's side. Meanwhile, John, Fili John Finkel mulliganing to six on our feature table. Ooh. Wow. Rack doses. Well, looks like we're going to cut away here and head back to our, <laughs> our main match. But we'll keep an eye on that one. Yeah. It just won't be uh, our main focus here as we're back with Pat Cox, who's down a game now to John Finkel. Now, Randy, you were saying this is basically a win and in for Finkel for right. top eight. Pat Cox only needs a draw, so he's very likely to make top eight, even with a loss here. The way the math works out, there's three different pair down matches this round. Huey's also paired down against Ichikawa. Um, depending on which way those matches go, we could have anywhere from zero 12 and fours make the top eight, all the way up to four 12 <laughs> oh, and fours make the top eight. Depending on the, those three results, we can get zero to four at 12 fours through. Wow. And, and nobody can miss on X3-1. Like, okay. if you get to 12-3-1, and one, you're just in. So that's where Pat and uh, Huey are right now, and that's where all these X3s are hoping to get to. 
So relevant for people like Owen Turtenwald, who is X and Yes, Owen coming has in. great tiebreakers too. It's Neil Reeves with the best tiebreakers by far, and Owen has the second best. Wow. Okay. Uh, All right, much better start here though for Patrick Cox as he's looking to equalize this match. He's already put five power on the battlefield at this early stage. It's only turned three here. And Finkel hasn't done much yet. It looks like he had two tap lands here. Now, Finkel does have a Bile Blight in his hand that he can use next turn. Uh, Cox wouldn't want to play a second copy of anything. But yeah, definitely a lot of threats on the battlefield. And Finkel behind wow, right seven now. Seven power now here for Pat Cox. He's doing what he does. So Ichikawa won that game. Yep. Yeah, the Planeswalkers got there. Turns out having three Planeswalkers, even versus a pretty big Desecration Demon, was enough. Yeah, and Xenagos in particular matching up very, very well. Yeah, you mentioned that. He, he was able to buy like three turns while we had them on air. Yeah, he played a replacement Xenagos after we left. Ah. John Finkel's planning it out. This seems like a pretty critical uh, juncture for this game here as... Uh, Patrick Cox has certainly put the pressure on John and said, look, you need to deal with these pretty soon, buddy. Yeah, I mean, Life Bait and Zombie, very good here. It's able to take out either Rampager or Reckoner, but Cox can just use the other one, Celestia Charm, ensuring that he can get Life stuff through. Um, but Downfall Demon, I mean, Cox does need to end this game quickly because if Finkel is able to keep playing stuff, I mean, Elspeth, Demon, Downfall to kill the biggest creature. Wow. John's got to decide what to take with this life main zombie. I think it's Boros Reckoner, right? I, I think one, one question Clan is the can, math, yeah. Because he, he can't got a summon the Gorf Clan, in his but... hand. Yeah, he can't actually play it currently, but he's got a uh, he's got a uh, hero's downfall in his hand. So if he lets him have the Reckoner, he might have a plan for that later. Right. I mean, because okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if he had Reckoner, he'd be able to attack for eleven, and if he drew a land, thirteen with Celestia Charm. So that would mean that John would have to block with Life Bane. He'd still lose Life Bane and fall to one. So by taking the Reckoner, he gives himself a the lot Ravager. more time. Or sorry, the Rampager. The, right, the Rampager. He gives himself a lot more time this turn. The downside is he could be staring at uh, yet another threat on Pat's side of the board if Pat hard casts the Boros Reckoner. Yeah, even if John has, has the uh, answer for it, he's just falling so, so far behind on tempo here. Now Pat Cox has an interesting decision on whether he wants to prioritize getting Reckoner on the battlefield or if he wants to use his Celestia Charm to pump up the cat there. I really like hard casting Reckoner. Yeah. Gets it out of your hand to avoid being hit by another zombie. And this 1-1 one, one token from Precinct Captain is mm -hmm. huge here as it would be, it allows you to tap down the Desecration Demon and oh. pump through two more damage with Celestia Charm. I mean, if John casts Demon, Patrick has lethal on the yes. board right now because yes. of Celestia Charm. The problem, of course, from Patrick Cox's side is that John knows. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he's not going to let that happen if he can stop it. But it does feel like his options are pretty limited as Patrick Cox has had a very quick start and put a ton of pressure on John Finkel. Who needs card advantage if you kill your opponent when they've got four cards in hand? I suppose that's a four for one as well. I mean, the, uh, Patrick's Ooh. deck just looks like a completely different deck this game. Yeah. Finkel plays Godless Shrine and says go. He's got a hero's downfall in hand, but this seems pretty easy for Patrick Cox to play around here. He's attack with everything. Yeah, I mean, I think John buys himself yeah, sure. another turn because Patrick can't use Celestia Charm without walking into hero's downfall. Right. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight right now. <coughs> and yeah, Patrick's not falling for that. He says no effects. But John Finkel's going to take down Precinct Captain to keep the, the flow of soldier tokens that's to a minimum exiled, here. Sure. That gets exiled. Now, he can use it now if he wants, but it doesn't actually accomplish lethal damage, so there's not a big reason to do it. Wow. wow. Another Fleece Mane Lion here for Pat Cox. Had one earlier. He traded it for the zombie. He's got another one. What a fast wow. draw for Pat Cox. And he runs over John Finkel to equalize. We're going to get a game three here. A pair of close ones so far. <clears throat> I can imagine that's a matchup where being on the play just matters tremendously. I mean, John playing first means life being zombie hits a lot more. I mean, even if uh, Patrick has a two drop, another two drop zombie gets gotten. Also makes the hero's downfalls way more tempo positive plays. All right, let's take a quick look in here on Yvonne Flock versus Ben Friedman. Uh, so Flock, he's playing blue-white. 
And Friedman is on black white. Yeah, Flock, uh, a, another one of those really, really late game oriented blue white control decks. Four copies of Quicken, lots of mass removal, very similar to what we were seeing last round. Right. <laughs> Update from our back table Jackson Cunningham wins 2 0 over the Citrus Assassin, Greg Orange. So Orange is going to drop down to 11 and 4 and put himself kind of in the thick of that mess to see. Yeah, he's hoping for what the other results to do. open up some X4 spots. Right. Jackson Cunningham is now only a draw away. Wow. He can so, take the King of the Hill title into tomorrow if oh, he gets that draw. Very nice. You know, I talked to Jackson this morning after he uh, drafted a red green deck he really liked and had just lost two matches in rapid order. He was, you know, kind of saying, like, uh, well, I, here, here went this tournament. I was feeling really good, but I don't know about now. But it looks like he really was able to rally. I don't know if he's lost a match since then. His constructed record must be fantastic. He's picked up two losses in that one draft. Yeah. Yeah. Here's Read the Bones, a card that Ben Friedman has been championing from the feature match area, no less, in, uh, I think, a Russian accent, maybe? He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's a kind of a, kind of a funny guy. You can see he's got his, uh, his signature hat. Two fresh ones off yeah. the Read the Bones. Yeah, he shipped, shipped the top two to the bottom. All right, let's head back to our main feature match. We're going to get in game three here. Pat Cox versus John Finkel. A win and in for either player. Is it Pro Tour M15 or is it really Pro Tour JM15? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> Johnny Magic looking for top eight, number 15. Thinking about making 15 Pro Tour top eights is flabbergasting. <laughs> Like, there are plenty of very, very good players that have, like, played in 15 Pro Tours. <laughs> All right, Dryad Militant. Nice start here for Pat Cox. That's a follow-up play. A Pack Rat. Ah, maybe we're going to pick a fight here. Wow, that was a... Mizium Mortars, I believe, off the top for Pat Cox. Yep. If he has a red mana source, this could be a great window to just nab that Pack Rat. Yes, it is. Stomping ground untapped. Mortars it. Whew. Dodged a bullet there. And John Finkel's going to have to try to find another avenue to victory other than the, the Pack Rat plan here. He's got Bile Blight Downfall, two really the best cards in this matchup. I just want to draw Bile Blight all day long because oh, that like stops some of Patrick's literal best draws. You know, I mean, you can imagine just going like militant, militant here being really, really good, and instead it would just lose you the game. And that goes for pairs of things like Police Main Lions. So John has the tools. What he doesn't have is a threat, doesn't have a way to gain card advantage. So I think he's going to have to hope his one for one removal buys him enough time to draw into some of his late game powerhouses. Yeah, what, how many creatures does Pat have in his hand? I mean, John's draw is basically kill your first three guys and hope that's good enough. Yeah, we're trying to get Pat's hand up on the tool right now. I think we'll be able to take a look at it in just a few minutes. All right, here's Fleece Main Lion with an ominous mana confluence sitting there, <laughs> maybe representing a little uh, Brave the Elements action here. And it's there. And Celestine and Charm Boros Reckoner allows him to sequence plays very nicely. What John really wants right here is a Lightbane zombie, and he just doesn't have it. <laughs> Is he going to go for the, yeah, he's going to go for the main he phase to. hero's downfall. <laughs> Pat Cox is going to fall to 15 from his lands alone, but he's going to use Brave the Elements to save his Fleece Main Lion. Yeah, that was uh, end so, step. Sorry, not. end step. Thanks, Randy. And uh, Fleece Main Lion is vulnerable here, though. Yeah, you see Pat is playing his creatures off curve in order to leave up Brave the Elements. John knew that, but he can't afford to not spend his mana. He's just got, he had to plow through the Brave the Elements. He trades a card for the Brave, not the end of the world. That means Pat's three creature draw is really like a four creature draw because of that Brave the Elements. Right. On the other side, though, John drew a fourth removal spell. Now you see John attacking with that beautiful. That's actually really relevant here because Patrick at 13 with a mana confluence on the battlefield. That means if Patrick wants to cast anything, John can actually beat the Dryad Militant in a race. <laughs> he does want to cast something, though, and it's a nice one. Boros Reckoner. 
pretty easy to kill. Most of the removal spells that John has in his deck kill it, but he needs one. When the ones that John has in his hand right now do not. Oh, wow. Uh, ultimate, ultimate price. <laughs> Go ahead, Zach. Ultimate price, yeah. Only kills monocolored creatures. Last breath only kills small creatures. Life mm. being zombie would have been great last turn, but it uh, doesn't great. really hit anything. Oh, no, oh did he get precinct captain. captain? Wow. Patrick drew precinct captain last turn. Wow. So, yeah, the life being zombie, pretty big but still no really good answers to that Boros Reckoner. From our back tables, yeah. Huey Jensen has fallen. Yuki Ichikawa beats him two games to zero. Does that have any implications? I mean, is he pretty much guaranteed to be able to handshake next, next round, Randy? I mean, or not is there guaranteed. some weird? I mean, he should get the draw next turn, and even if he doesn't, Huey's going to be the guy in the field with the best tiebreakers, okay. I would think. So, I mean, it's hard to imagine. Obviously, Huey would rather clinch it there, but... Oh, so it's playing this on this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the spell resolves. So this is not here. Then it goes to the graveyard, and it's already gone. So it does okay, end up sure. in the graveyard. Sure. So I go to 16. Right? Yeah. Okay, so Patrick Cox actually jumps back up to 16 from uh, last breath here. Could be quite relevant. You mentioned it earlier, Zach, that Finkel looked to be applying some pressure with his Mutavault, kind of punishing Pat Cox for playing two untapped shock lands and also using a Manic Influence multiple times. But Here's another Dryad Militant. How many creatures in Pat's list does that ultimate price actually kill? There aren't that many, yeah. Precinct Captain. Kill Soldier of the Pantheon. Yes. Probably enough. There's kills. like eight creatures it kills. Right. Precinct Captain. It kills Knight Tokens. Yes. Sure. I, I could have won, but probably not. What just and happened? I feel like I don't really want to push it anymore. Did they draw? I think they may have taken a draw. Yeah. All right, so, they so, drew. What, so what does that mean, Randy? Okay, so that is John figuring... You know, Pat offered the draw at the beginning of the match. Pat clinches top eight with a match. Which, okay. So congratulations to Pat Cox. With that intentional draw, he clinches a top eight berth. Now, John does not clinch a top eight berth. John needed a win and a draw in the last two rounds. So what he did was he played the match out, and now he felt like he was in a losing position in game three. So he's like, I don't want to lose. A loss probably eliminates me. So he said, Pat, you, is that draw offer still on the table from the beginning of the match? And Pat could not extend his hand fast he, Exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> so John gets the draw here, and now he plays a clean win and in next round. Wow, that's going to be great. We'll make sure to uh, keep our eye on that next round. John Finkel playing for his 15th Pro Tour Top 8 here at Pro Tour Magic 2015. Too good. <laughs> Too good. Back over to Ben Friedman, though, versus Ivan Flock. And this is never good. We missed the elixir, right? Let them yeah, yeah, yeah. double Thanks check where they're at here. They forgot to add the life for an elixir. But what I was going to yeah, say is hey it's man. never even good when your opponent, match, you know, your you blue-white opponent, has whatever 10 lands, 10 lands on the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, And he does have a pack rat. Friedman does. But uh, you got to figure that Flock can find enough answers for just the pack rat. And, uh, well, there's one now, basically. He's also holding a Supreme Verdict, I think. Yeah, I see Dissolve Supreme Verdict. He's got Quicken Supreme Verdict, in fact. Ah. Downfall. So it's not over. He's not holding a Sphinx's Revelation. Yeah, Sphinx's he's Revelation not. would just end the game. There's some chance that Ben can kind of trade his way out of this. And Ben has a lot of cards in his hand. I see two copies of Liliana Vess. Oh, interesting. So while it isn't great that Flock has gotten to this point, it looks like Ben Friedman has been uh, grinding some card advantage of his own and actually looks quite a bit ahead. He's even got an Obsidot in there. It uh, looks like Obsidot, double Liliana, at least one Life Bane zombie. But right now he's just like, OK, I'm going to sit back on mana. Doesn't want to walk into Dissolve, I don't guess. That is a Dissolve in his hand, though. Is that not a Dissolve? Yeah, it is. Oh, I thought it was, oh, a, quick, right, I thought it was a Quicken. Yeah, it, it looked like a Dissolve a to me, dissolve. though. It, I, it's strange that he didn't play either of them with the uh, Hero's Downfall there. You'd think he'd want to protect Elspeth there, right, Zach? That makes sense. I mean, I'm looking at his Liliana's hand and the worse for says Dissolve. But yeah, I, I think you're right. I think he just wants to make sure that Friedman doesn't cast a game-ending threat. Um, yeah, you know, he can pull the trigger on Supreme Verdict whenever he wants to. So I think he just wants to, you know, not rely upon Elspeth. You know, it runs into Bileblight, which probably isn't in the deck anymore. But it makes him have to fight over every single hero's downfall. And, and he knows he's going to have to Supreme Planeswalker. Verdict at some point soon. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, here he even baits him into it, putting a fourth pack right onto the board wow. to make the Supreme Verdict that much better. 
Yeah, like like I Flock like just blind. has to dissolve. Like Obsidat, for example, is a card that just you know. Yeah, Obsidat's not that good against too. the four Quicken deck. Sure, it's really Liliana. And speaking of Liliana, here she is, and Flock is basically forced to dissolve that. That's so what he was saving it for. Yeah, yep. now now we're in the part of the game where Ivan is going to dig for mm -hmm. Sphinx's Revelation. He just put a card on the bottom. He just drew a card with Azorius Charm, and he has a very simple plan A here. Find Divinations wow. and lead them right into Sphinx's Revelations. Unfortunately for him, a pair of planes off the top has led... A clear path here for Ben Friedman to just go for it and land Liliana, or in this case, Obsidot. And Flock wow, has to uh, accept that. So, sigh of relief for Ben Friedman there. He's up a game here, remember. And now he's got a nasty threat on the battlefield, and Flock doesn't have a lot going on. But this is where the blue white player always draws his Sphinx's Revelation. Isn't that how <laughs> yeah. this deck works? <laughs> But Ben gets to play Liliana. He can tutor. He can make his opponent discard. Well, he's probably going to thought seize first to clear a path for Liliana. Excellent my guess. point. In case that's a counter spell that uh, Ivan's sitting on. Yes, you're absolutely right. Oh. It swings his revelation. Oh, wow. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah it, it is. is. Totally is. Yes, it is. We called it. We said it was about that time. So what do we got? Jeez. 10, 11, 10. We're at 17. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Oh, man, and, and Elixir of Immortality, yes. he could take that, he could take... The well, there's another Sphinx's Revelation, there he might oh. have to do that, but... Well, yeah, uh... <laughs> Uh-oh. I started shuffling his deck. Uh, it, it's in this order. I didn't actually do any real shuffling. I just, like, started to. Well, perhaps yeah. a little awkward there. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Friedman well, well, kind of yeah. muscle memory deck. started shuffling. Yeah, yeah and, and a reason that could uh, matter is that Flock has cast order. Dissolved. Okay. So he order knows the, the order of at right, least so a couple of cards in the deck. Going to 14 from the thoughts he does right now? Down. He oh. cast Dissolve a couple oh, turns ago. Oh, on the bottom ago. of the deck. So he knows mean. about the bottom of course. Of yeah. That matters. Yeah, it does. Like, those cards are supposed to be on the bottom. They still right. are. He didn't they actually shuffle. He just started to. They preserved the order. Says you. All right. So right now... The decision point, though, is Ben Friedman has a resolving thought seize, and yep. he needs to decide what the heck he's taking. It really depends on how much further he thinks this game is going to go. There's another Sphinx's Revelation, but, Zach, you mentioned it, too. The Elixir is an important part of the puzzle for Yvonne as the game goes uh, long. Well, I mean, if he leaves him a Planar Cleansing and a Sphinx's Rev, though, he can yeah. win without Elixir. So you're and he's got that quicken too. Like How does he win? Randy, so I think he just got like mutable. He, he cannot lose with that combo, but I mean, he can tick up Jace, Jace. and just steal anything. So Jace becomes his primary. Win yeah, condition. and he's got a few mutables. So I mean, if he just he may have boarded in an ether lane. Okay. Interesting spot here for Friedman. I yeah, don't envy looking at ten cards. Yeah, he goes for the planar cleansing. I think that's the right. Card. I like that a lot. Jace. Now his Liliana that he's about that he's clearing a path for. Remember, this is all the clear path for Liliana. She will resolve, and there's not an immediate Liliana answer in that hand. He's tapped out, so he can't counter it. So then the question is, what can Friedman get out of his deck to try to shut the door on Yvonne? Because Liliana plus yeah. isn't too exciting here now that right. Flock is. I mean, a couple turns discarding. of it will add up. Right. I don't mind going and getting Whip of Erebos. Yeah, he yeah. likes to do that too. I watched him do that in the feature match area earlier. Gives him a lot of inevitability. I mean, if there was He's something about could, it, if there was something he could do against Sphinx's Revelation, I'd do that. But it doesn't really work that way. I mean, he could force the issue and get a thought seize here, and sure. just try to overload Flock because his Flock's going to be, you know, he's going to be on seven or six cards by the time he passes the turn back anyway. But. Yeah, I, th I think I like Whip. I like what you said before, Zach. I saw him go through his entire deck, though, and not stop on anything, so... It looks like he's still deciding. This is not clear to him exactly what he wants. He's formulating a plan. Remember, he's got to factor in all of the cards he knows about uh, in Yvonne's hand, which are nine remaining cards, so he knows a lot about how this game is going to go. Block has to wait patiently here. 
Right, because Ben is having to take into account every single one of Flock's cards and what That's Flock right. is likely to be able to draw. Right. And every single card in his deck. Yeah, this is a tough, tough spot here for Friedman. And it uh, looks like he chose something, but uh, the brim of the hat, man, I didn't quite see what it was. He's got it set aside there, though, so. Top. Passes the turn back after the uh, Obsidat trigger, and Flock gets to untap with mana and cards. He draws Divination for the turn two. I don't know where this is heading. Yeah, I mean, Flock, grip full of cards. Friedman just tutored, has a Liliana, has an Obsidat. I'm going to have to give the favor to Flock, though. I mean, any time that you untap with that big Sphinx's Revelation, you have Elixir, you have another Revelation, you have a way to clear the board, or, or at least you can get to one uh, with the other Revelation. It's going to keep you alive. I mean, you have to think it's a matter of time. But again, the thing is, Friedman's up a game. So right. Flock, again, has to actually win this match with Elspeth in the graveyard. He's got an elixir, but that means he has to draw to the other Elspeth. I don't think that's going to be a problem, Zach. No, <laughs> I'm with you, man. I, I think he's in a fine position here. I mean, he's at 17 life. Very difficult for him to lose, like, in a quick manner here. So uh, Friedman went and got Elspeth. Okay. Which uh, is sort of forcing Flock to go find a planar cleansing. Right, so he stripped away the planar cleansing, and is now going to try to overload the board with permanence and just run Yvonne Flock over. So he's got a game plan. He still has Liliana as well. But Flock is going to be able to activate that elixir, counter anything that uh, Friedman tries to do, untap and cast, uh, you know, a just gargantuan Sphinx's revelation. Yeah, he's also got. Uh, Quicken Divination if he wants to just draw cards on end step. Like, he's got a ton of options yeah. here. I mean, really, the blue-white control decks are all about just stalling, 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 playing lands, playing lands. And you just fire off a revelation for, like, seven, mm. and you figure out how to win the game. From yeah, there. exactly. Now, we've got to keep our eye on the clock as well, as that will start to become more of a factor. You know, assuming that Yvonne finds a way to win this game, which is not a foregone conclusion no, by any by stretch, any but assuming that he does, he's got another one to win as well. Yeah, I mean, he, he could, you know, brick on a revelation. I mean, even if it's for a lot, it's not for, you know, his whole deck or whatever. And Friedman has a lot of permanence on the battlefield. Randy, what is a draw? It's actually not that for bad. These players? Both guys stay live. Both guys play win and ins next round if they draw. Okay. And normally a draw is just a death knell, but was, I, I think there were so many people clustered around the center that it hasn't been that bad. I mean, you know, Finkel's still alive after the draw. All right, so there's the instant speed divination on end step. He sees a couple of lands. Maybe it's not end step. No, it's not end step. The way the rounds have gone so far, by the way, we're not looking at a lot of 12-4s getting in. Mm -hmm. Jensen lost. That was bad news for the 12-4s. And the one 11-3 uh, uh, that got paired down was Matt Sperling, and he won. So Sperling, uh, if he'd lost there, might have opened up a spot for a 12 and 4, but he won. Where does that put Sperling? Uh, he's on X and 3. He just, he's, Sperling can draw in. Wow. That would be his first Pro Tour top 8. Yeah. Jackson Cunningham also got a win that puts him in position to draw in. As did uh, Yuki Ichikawa. All right, so Desecration Demon resolves a little while ago there. Another search there from Liliana. And a pass of the turn is going to be, well, don't forget that one. Oh, is that one exiled? Might be exiled to a Sin Collector or something like that. It's possible. He didn't pick did it up. Did he just miss it? That's a pretty important one. I, that I, is a big one. Yeah, that must have gotten exiled. Interesting. Cool. Quicken off the top. Jace is going to go searching. And it's going to find a divination, a quicken, and another quicken. Two cards, one way or the other. <laughs> yeah. One yeah, of them is exactly. cheaper. Yeah, I'm going to guess the one that's instant speed and cheaper is the better way to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> and it has a pretty important functionality when your opponent has a uh, obsidat about to get you. Quicken. Draw a card. And that was Azorius Charm. Two more quickens in hand, though, for Flock among many others. Temple of Enlightenment to uh, get a scry effect. Ship that to the bottom. 
Uh, Zorius Charm does deal with both the yeah. Demon and the Obsidat, assuming Obsidat attacks. <clears throat> Make you discard a card. Not a, not a huge deal here. Yeah. Flock is going to use a quicken here and finds a Sphinx's Revelation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we saw Friedman Tudor twice. He got Whip of Erebos, Elspeth's Son's Champion. Those were the cards we were talking about. What he's got to figure out now is just an Another opening one? with which to cast. All right. <laughs> All right. And oh, there wow. it is, there Supreme is. Verdict. That helps. <laughs> Remember, the quicken's... They're still active here, so he gets to uh, Verdict here. And he's going to discard Azorius Charm. Yeah. Boom. If you draw enough cards, you're going to find what you're looking for. And, and, and that Supreme Verdict means he's essentially got to show him a Dissolve here. Yep. Oh, he just let it resolve. He did. He gets opposite that back. So now he's going to have to deal with that situation again. We're past combat, though, so he just gets to exile it. But okay. uh, so he's yeah. got deicide. So he does now need to deal with opposite again, but not the uh, the whip ever again. It's gone. What did you discard tonight? Uh, uh, Azorius Charm. Oh, Azorius Charm. Yeah. All right. You drew One. tick. Yep. And that other Azorius Charm means that Flock can de Oh, wow. Is that another... Uh, Supreme Verdict. Another up verdict there. And, and a Dissolve. Yeah. So that gives Flock two counter spells. He can charm the Obsidat. And then just counter it on the way back down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and anytime he wants, he's just going to cast a Mammoth Revelation. I mean, look at how many lands he has. He has, like, most of the lands in his deck on the table. Maybe not most of them, but a huge chunk of them. I'm at 22. Drop. He's got 17 lands? Is that right? That's, Jeez. I counted 15, but uh, That's what I a, a 15. lot. <laughs> and I mean, Flock, you're right. I mean, he's still just got to. I mean, if he intends to pick up this match, he's got to win the game. Yeah, and I mean, there's there Azorius is. Charm, and Friedman's more than content to just keep casting that card. Meanwhile, not in the featured, but uh, Jeremy Dizani won his match. He clinches player of the year with a top 16, even if Owen Turtenwald sneaks into the top eight. Oh, man. Go. And he's in position hey, hey, if for the Owen, top 16. If Owen can win even, does Dizani get it? No, if, if Dizani gets a top 16, then Owen winning the Pro Tour is not good enough. Wow. All right, so this is a revelation for six. Owen did, <laughs> Owen did win his round, Four by the seven. way. So he is set to try to sneak in as the really? only 12-4. Yeah, wow. he's in position. He's doing his work. Neil Reeves is the only person with better breakers. Who also won? I don't have that result yet. Not yet. Okay. Pierre Mondon just got within a draw of top eight. He defeats Adam Koska to move to 12 and 3. Wow. That'd be G GP champ, Pierre Mondon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that'd be a big finish for Pierre. I mean, he's been Definitely. playing in premier events for like a decade or something, if not more than that. He's always been kind of on the periphery, but he's been a rock solid player. So it'd be a breakout finish for him at the pro tour level. So Elspeth here for Ivan Flaw. He's also yeah, got Chase sitting there, yeah. too. He's not. Yeah, it's okay. It's like I said, if I forgot, it's okay. Still, I, I know you still got it. <laughs> <laughs> he he <laughs> he plussed uh, Elspeth, and we just wanted to make sure that he was like, no, I'm getting the counter or getting the tokens. But he also said, yeah. even if I forgot, four. I think I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right, be careful. <laughs> yeah, you saw that syncopator was originally for th he he meant for four, but he only tapped three lands. I think three he said be sync for four. Oh, okay. It, it was close. You heard Friedman go, ah, okay, be careful. Hey, Flock had a dissolve if worse came to worse. But. Your turn. So Flock with an active Elspeth neutralized Ben Friedman's, we got to assume his best threats because Friedman tutored for them with Liliana. Yep. So this is now Flock firmly in the driver's seat with the threat on the table. This needs to produce enough damage to end the game. Uh, within the time limit. Well, Elspeth looks like uh, that's the plan. Elspeth is on six loyalty counters. So just a few short turns away from uh, 
Losing <laughs> some creatures and then going for an emblem. And this is Obsidot again. Man. Flux Doesn't drops run down out to 15. Now he just drew another one. Just don't know how relevant it is at this point, but Flock's like, sure. Dissolve it. I mean, again, when your opponent tutors a couple of times, yeah, and, and, and that's going to be. Okay, so that's going to be game, and that means that we're going to get a game of three here. How much time's left on the round? I don't know. We're going to, we'll have Rashad tell us. 15 minutes? Okay. Is that what I heard? <laughs> yeah, Remember, 15. the players in the feature match here are on their own Revelation. separate clock because it takes a few minutes to get them over there and get them set. Garrick staring them down ominously. I can give you the big picture update, by the way. Do that. Do. Ignoring this match, I've got six players who can draw into the top eight. William Jensen, Pat Cox is already there, Jackson Cunningham, Matt Sperling, Pierre Mondon, and Yuki Ichikawa. Now, John Finkel is on 34, can play and win to get to 37. The winner of this match will be there. If they draw... Wow, if they draw, we could actually get nine players on 37. Ooh, Because awkward. playing and winning next round. No, one of them will get paired against Finkel. Yeah, I still think... I don't think you can get nine to 37. I think he, I think, but I do think you can get eight to 37. Okay. Like, we could squeeze out all the 12 fours if we get another one more intentional draw, unintentional draw. Now, we're talking about win conditions a minute ago with uh, Yvonne Steck, Zach, and uh, one of the maybe less conventional ones is uh, Jace Architect of Thought. I saw him. I, I, I've seen two Jaces ultimate in the feature match area on the weekend, and they were both immediate concessions from the opponent as well. Um, talk to us about using that as actually your win condition as opposed to just, like, maybe a card advantage. Well, you know, I, I mean, what you can do, you can go through, you know, each player's library... Get a card. So you're going to get your Elspeth probably. You can also just maybe get another Jace if you have to pay all eight loyalty. You're going to get your opponent's biggest threat. The reason you've probably seen people concede in response to it is if the ability resolves, you actually just get to look through your opponent's entire deck, meaning that if it's game two, you get the knowledge of how they've sideboarded against you, which is a huge information advantage. So Jace Architect of Thought, you know, they, they usually play one finisher in their deck. You're going to get something from your opponent's. It certainly can end the game by ticking up, and it protects you while, while it does that. All right, looks like we're underway here back in the feature match, so why don't we get caught up? There's a thought seize, though, on turn right, one here from Ben Friedman. And speak of the devil, we were just talking about Jace, and Friedman immediately took it, leaving Flock with six lands in hand? What? So, I guess three temples, and he knows he needs a lot of mana. Doesn't think the game is going to end quickly, but this is a big window for Freeman. Freeman can just, like, play a pack rat and start going to town. Yep. All right, scry land, scry land. He's really going to be shipping any lands to the bottom. He keeps that one on top, though. And what does Freeman have for pressure? Well, it's pretty good. He's got our world yep. connections, though. It kind of plays into what you were just saying, Zach, about the game not ending anytime soon. Yeah. I mean, Underworld Connections, definitely the way that the black and black-white decks can pressure things like Sphinx's Revelation. I mean, you can draw as many cards as a, a, a small-sized Revelation off of Connections. But I do think Friedman needs to apply pressure to take advantage of this land-heavy hand. Yeah, he can use Connections to fuel that pressure, though. I mean, basically what happens is that when the black-white deck wins, it'll win it, you know, its advantage to early, and then eventually once the blue-white deck gets 10 lands in play, it moves into the advantage. So it's not like you have to. He has to win in you know five turns. For sure, he has to win in like ten turns, mm -hmm. maybe twelve. Now, interestingly, you notice Freeman keeping in Bla uh, Bile Blight, even though all it targets are Elspeth tokens, but it can help coming back from two or even three Elspeth activations. So Flock shows him a quickened that he gets to take away with the Sin Collector. There passes the turn back, and Flock has been doing plenty of scrying here. Three of his four lands have scry attached to them, but. Uh, Ben Friedman's got it figured out. Yeah, that underworld drawing connection. extra cards. Yeah. yeah. Definitely a big deal here. <laughs> drawing <laughs> extra cards. Better than scrying. Friedman knows. Better than scrying. Paying yeah. life to draw cards with three yeah, yeah, mana okay. black enchantments. A long and storied history. All right, attack. What's the follow up play here for Friedman? Is it more pressure? It is, but it's sort of passive pressure in the form of <laughs> another uh, underworld connection. But that's going to get syncopated so off it goes and step one for Yvonne Flock is a Sphinx's revelation it's perhaps a little early for it Randy like 
he, Does he, he want to wait a couple up fire, turns? Yeah, he wants to wait a couple turns. 16. Back for two. What do you got? A demon? Yeah, you got a demon, Ben Friedman. Now, so now he's got some pressure. He may need to. He could rev for two here. It's not crazy. I like revving here just because, like, if you draw a planar cleansing, exactly. it is a huge beating. He drew another rev. Interestingly, the rev there also buys him essentially a full turn as uh, Ben Friedman had eight power on the battlefield and Flock was at 16. Yep. Ooh. I, like, I actually like wow, that's killing a... Desecration. But I mean, the there. tokens effectively do that too, right? I mean, it's unless they get Bile Blight. True, true. And here wow. they go, Bile Blight. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's huge. That is huge. That means that Elspeth is dying this turn. I mean, yeah, that, that, that is a mammoth. I mean, that's wow. brilliant uh, leaving in a Bile Blight by Friedman. I mean, it looked weird. one target. Yeah, we looked at it. It looked weird when we saw it, but wow. I don't think Yvonne Flock was expecting it. Either. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, oh. but Planner cleansing off the top for Hopping Flock deck here. loves him. Not yeah. only kills the two creatures, but also the Underworld connections. Cleansing Jeez. is so brutal. All that work. And there's another Desecration Demon, though, to try to get the pressure back going for Friedman. Unfortunately for him, Flock just drew another nice one in this situation. Azorius Charm to put it right back on top and buy him even more time here. So Friedman's been the, the aggressor. I put that in air quotes. But he's the one applying pressure, putting out threats. But Flock has been pretty happy to just rip the right answers at the right time and yeah. let the demon bang. resolve. He gets to rev for six. He's already got a Supreme Verdict in his hand to kill the demon. Definitely have passed the point where the black-white deck is advantaged. Firmly you're gonna into start the place where it's all yes. on blue-white side. Yeah, and you're going to start seeing Ivan Flock play very quickly here. Right. Yeah, the question now is he's, he's fighting against the clock. He's not fighting against Ben any longer. Boom. I talked to him about it um, after he was done with the match down there, and he said... Uh, I said, you were playing really quickly. He said, yeah. He's like, I can turn it up pretty quick. He did mention, yep. though, uh, that his good friend Stanislav Sifka, he says once Sifka gets in the yep. zone, he said he plays twice as fast as, <laughs> as Flock uh -huh. can. Yeah. So we've got a mute vault. So Flock can actually start pressuring Friedman. And Friedman, between the Underworld Connections and Thoughts, Ooh. he's at 12 life. Sin Collector, though, is going to prompt a cycle here and a quicken <laughs> and a couple of lands off the top for flock and <laughs> let's make sure that we kill Comes that play effect <laughs> and nice right. hand uh, flock. Uh, do you want to keep so I mean, this is relevant now because if Flock has a couple of blanks and Friedman rips, you know, another desecration yeah. demon or yeah. an obsidian, I mean, yeah. all those extra uh, cards didn't turn into anything. Your turn. It's so unlikely, but it's so possible. <laughs> Let's see. And that's why you have Blank to play the game. One. I mean, that's why you don't just sit and concede. Absolutely. Because things like this can happen. Nope. All right. So the Muta Vault plan isn't live here. Hero Sandfall takes it down. It's of course a possibility, but Ven Friedman doesn't have anything. He has to just say sure. go. Planar cleansing now for Flock gives him an answer in case Friedman does come up with something. Go. And Friedman does not. He plays a land and says go. Jace, architect of thought though, is going to get the ball rolling here for Flock. He immediately minuses it and shows quicken <laughs> cleansing and a land. Yep. It's like a guild gate there. Yeah, and, and Flock, he knows what he wants. He's already got a cleansing in hand. He wants to start working through his library as fast as possible here. And there's another hero's downfall now for Friedman to take out Jace. But again, you know, we, we saw this in, a, in an earlier game between them. Th that's a pretty good outcome there for Flock. Okay. Uh, yeah. Pressure. So, I mean, Flock already has a planar cleansing. He's going to have to use it on the pack rat. He's got the quick and planar cleansing Yeah, Ben combo. doesn't know about the planar cleansing, oh, so I think no. he is correct to just move in here. Yeah, I, I, he knows I absolutely agree. I mean, that. shouldn't Ben sense that, though, since uh, Flock just put one of them on the bottom of his library? Yeah, but his route to victory involves even drawing blanks. That's what we said a couple turns ago after the big red. It sure. had to be a blank, and Ben had to go for it. I think Ben's correct to go for it. I mean, no, he, doesn't, he wasn't thinking it was a high percentage play, but it was his highest yep. percentage play. Yep. And you saw him put his hands up like, hey, if you got it, you got it. Right. You yeah, know, exactly. Fire it off. Right. I mean, certainly the way to lose is waiting even longer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. 
I don't know about, I mean, if you don't discard that last Lifebane zombie for more damage, then maybe you can cast it post Planar Cleansing, but I definitely understand, like, you just want to pile on damage, give your opponent as few turns as possible. All right, so the whip is going to get countered Good. by Dissolve, which is still on the battlefield. <laughs> now, Permanent. we know it's a revelation on top because Flock left yeah. it there. It's either that or a uh, divination. And I'll let's draw, draw some lot. cards here. Four, five, 10, 11, 12, 13? 13 cards. <laughs> Randy, what's the most you ever necroed for? Was it thir more than 13? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't gain 13 life. You Usually it's in the combo deck where you can just win the game on the next turn. <laughs> Fair. This is a combo deck where you can win the game on the following 16 turns later. <laughs> but he's basically got it locked up at this point. In the Pro Tour I won, I did actually uh, Necro up to 13 against a Stompy deck that had like five green creatures in play, <laughs> leaving one red mana untapped. And as soon as I said Necro for, I think it was actually 13. I Sven's far geared to was just like, oh no, you play that Firestorm card, don't you? It was <laughs> <laughs> just like, kill all of those and take six. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll keep these seven. I'll keep the rest of my hand, yeah. Wow. I mean, uh, another thing even's got to make sure he does it, or doesn't do is draw too many cards off a of revelation. Like, if you miscount while you're trying to change <laughs> your deck, deck you mean like when you're playing too quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're just playing too quickly, you revelation for 12, accidentally draw 13 cards, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, he's got to be procedurally correct here. He knows what he needs to do. The path is there for him, but he doesn't need to make sure that he hits it correctly here. It does look like it's a foregone conclusion at this point if Flock doesn't do something like that, that he's going to win this. He finds another counter here, and he's got Jace ticking upwards. Like you, you still have enough time left? Are they down to five minutes, or do they have more than that? I mean, you see his hand shaking right now. Yeah, and, and it can't be more than five minutes. I mean, Flock's at 11-3. This minutes? is for top eight, Randy? This is for top like, eight. This is, the winner gets to draw in next round. Like, this is him, don't screw up anything, and I made a top eight at the PT here. And he's also beating down with another Muta Vault that he found. Zach, you saw this line a long time ago. His other Muta Vault got killed, but he's back on that plan, and Friedman's down to eight life here. Thought sees you. <laughs> and syncopate for a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Syncopate for enough. Yeah, and again, you see, for even counting, just make yeah. sure. Your turn. A wry smile on Yvonne Flock's face. He knows, and there it was. That was Elixir of Immortality that he found. He's going to drop Friedman down to six, but that's his insurance plan. Once he gets that out of his hand, really tough for him to lose from this point. Desecration Demon yeah, now from Friedman. Remember, Flock's at 35 at this point. The demon is no longer a, rel a, a relevant threat. Now, Jace, of course, is not at 35, so he is going to need to do something about it if Jace is going to be his win condition going forward. Jace is on eight right now. Yeah, he's been that, Did I see up. that correctly? He's on eight. It's, yeah, he's okay. been ticking it up. That's his backup victory plan. Mutavault would also... Mutavault's easier, but Jace can get the job done if necessary. That's the backup plan. Maybe he just goes for it here. Yeah. Supreme verdict to clear the way. Two and are we going to see? There it is. Dice oh, off ultimate. and ultimate Jace, architect of thought. And Ben Friedman's like, look, you're going to have to go through all the motions. No blame there. Ben's yeah, playing yeah. for top eight. Make, you know, show me something. Plus, he's probably gone through a lot of Ben's win conditions <laughs> just by countering and removing them all. But he pack finds rat. a pack rat. Was that what that was? Yeah, he took pack rat. Can, does he have black mana? That's what I'm wondering. It? I don't think so. Huh. Just to make sure Packrat's not on the battlefield? Oh, Urborg's in play. There's oh, an Urborg wow. somewhere? Oh, yeah, no, okay. I see it now. It's all the way on the left of Ben Friedman. Red Friedman's pile of lands. And oh, by the oh, way. Oh, by the way. Elspeth. Wow. We're going to have, oh, by the way, Mutavault attack. <laughs> make some tokens. Mutavault isn't even relevant. Leaf on next turn either way. All right, so let's assume that Flock finishes here. Where does that put Friedman? Is he playing for top 16 next round? Is he dead for top eight? Like, what does that mean? Uh, he's playing. He can maybe top 16. He can maybe draw to top 16. He's in the X4 scrum. Okay. All right. Yeah, there and we're going to see a hand extended. Yvonne Flock puts himself in a great spot for top eight here. So here's how Ooh. I. Yeah, that was great. Nice job, Yvonne Flock. The way I see it. 
Pat Cox is in on 37. Okay. There are six players at 36 who would like to draw next round. Well, one of them has to play Pat Cox. Maybe he plays Dream Wrecker. Maybe he draws to be above the scrum. I think he would draw to be above the scrum and just have the play draw advantage in most rounds, especially with his deck. So Welcome Pat back. Cox probably draws. Okay, great. You got six people at 36. One of them gets paired up, probably gets a draw from Pat Cox. One of them gets paired down against John Finkel. <laughs> Jeez. That guy doesn't get the draw. That guy not only fails to get the draw, he has to play John Finkel <laughs> that is in the last nasty. round of the Pro Tour for top eight. And then worst some, beat ever. Like that is so brutal to have to play John too. Yeah, and the way the way the pairings work, it uh, wow. I think it just pairs straight down the standings in the last round of the Swiss. So it'll be the person with the worst tiebreakers. I believe it's Yuki Ichikawa who's going to get paired down and have to play Finkel. Is what this looks like to me. And then I think so. There's six, it's five people plus Pat Cox. That gives you six spots. The winner of Finkel versus whoever gets paired down, probably Ichikawa, is the seventh guy in the top eight. That leaves one spot for a twelve and four. Now Pat Cox told Rich over at the news desk that he's going to play. Really? Yes. Really. He's wow. going to play. Now okay. is that a, is that a free roll for him? Like is he? Ken. Remember he took a draw last time with John. So. Yeah, and I think that might shake things up a little bit, right? All right, here. So I'm going to let you okay. sink into the numbers here. Rashad is waiting with Yvonne Flock down in the tournament uh, area. So why don't we send it down there? When we come back, we'll have Randy have figured everything out. Thanks, Marshall. I'm Rashad Miller, and I'm here with Yvonne Flock, and he's still on a high. This guy, he's, he's thinking he could draw out the top eight to his, your first Pro Tour top yes, eight? my first in 12 years of playing Magic. Oh, congratulations, first of all. And now, I've been watching you throughout the day in the feature match area, and you've gone to a lot of game threes late, late in the round, and then you really kick it up a notch. T tell us about how you kick it into gear during your game, your game threes. Uh, well, uh, how? I just have to, because otherwise I would draw with the deck. The deck is just slow in killing opponent. It takes forever. Now, do, do you have Aetherling in your deck? Do you have any other cards in your sideboard that you bring in for these situations? Uh, no, I, I don't have Aetherling in main deck uh, or sideboard. I have only Elspeth for like quick deaths. And I basically need to shuffle with Elixir all over to find Elspeth and wait until it survives and kill my opponent. Okay, Let's talk a little bit about your opening hand in game three. Yeah. Now, the time is running out. You've, you're trying to win this game as fast as possible. And you see one spell and six lands. What's going through your head? Uh, well, first, I, I didn't, I thought he doesn't have peg red after cyborg, which I think he hasn't because game two went kind of long and he didn't play it. Second, I had Jace, which is good in this matchup. And third, I, uh, this matchup is about top decking. He basically always discards from, for all my hand and I need to every, top deck everything from the top. Plus, I had true scrylands to make the top deck more better, so I kept it. Okay, so the way that you won that game basically was with a Jace Ultimate. Now, how many games have you won with Jace Ultimate? And how many times have you activated someone else's uh, pack rat without having any black mana sources yourself? Uh, well, uh, usually my opponent scoops to ultimate from Jace. So uh, I, I don't think I kill anyone with their cards. Actually, they usually scoop and <laughs> I, I didn't make any pack rat. <laughs> But, but I can make it like 3-3 three, three with my Muta Valts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, well, there you have it. Ivan Flock, looking like he's going to be in top eight. We're going to send it back to the booth. All right, thanks. All right, Randy, finish your thought real quick, and then we're going to send it over to the news desk. Yeah. Top of the 33s on tiebreakers, trying to squeeze into what I route as one spot. Neil Reeves won. He has the best breakers. After that, you've got Owen in the mix. You've got Greg Orange in the mix. You know who else is in the mix? Who? Jeremy Dizani. Wow. All right. Why don't we send back over to the news desk for Richard Hagen awaits. I'm sure he's got all types of updates. Rich, what do we got? Thanks very much, guys. Yes, uh, we do have uh, standings after round 15, and it all depends on how pairings go. Um, but certainly what Randy said is true. Neil Reeves is the top of the 33 pointers right now uh, with a pretty healthy lead. Greg Orange, the second of those. Jeremy Dizani is in third spot on the 33s. Oh, and Turton Wild fourth. We'll come right back after a deck tech, but we've got someone who is maybe going to play Kingmaker, maybe play Dream Breaker, but has certainly been playing match winner all weekend long. It's time for our final deck tech of the Swiss. Here's Brian David Marshall and Pat Cox.